Nyumbwe in Gwembe district. We are here because uh, in 2018 we partnered with Choma Museum to train women in um, crafts and our partnership has resulted in some very interesting results and we are here to witness what uh, women are making. So, What <laughs> Sulaba Paji Su or Bolova Quera, then to Tajiwa in Bukera, Umion Bojuga, you saw of Apa Niva Winian Guerrera, Tianda Chaja into Chibeta. Pamian and Kwai Wukupa Nava Najoma, Vina Kutu Sambala Wumbi Pet Sambala Guba Najoma. Ma Tata Jagatu Veregera Maningi Via. I met to Jirum by Abia, Utigaji Sumana, we are Wum Berevia. Mumaganjira Mumutaba, Uliba, Bobagatariga Gunani, a day to Pamugomba. Mutu Jataman, so Vilo, as fair of your Utah, while me to Ungirida, Banaba, your own tab. Utah, you watch with it again. Come to you, so good Titula Jembala, or Utah, Banaba Gaja, the Gabatiani, Gabaji. kwa gaula be punikete wano muji mojangu mjini na ndagaula masenke ano ndo na mungande ya masenke magana aje ni baata liga kutuiji we partnered with Choma Museum um, in part because we saw a potential for a lot of growth in this whole artisanal and natural product and, and bio trade industry um, looking at kind of the global home decor industry and in, in the you know in the billions of dollars um, looking at a lot of other countries across the continent and how they've developed um, the the skills that are largely largely present in many rural areas um, we looked at Zambia and said why can't we do this here there's there's always been a lot of kind of production of these artisanal crafts and artisanal products um, primarily focused on the tourism industry uh, but in terms of kind of wanting to have scale of impact and reach a lot more people with, with this intervention, uh, we wanted to look at the export market in particular. So Choma Museum is one of the main um, actors in this, in this space in, in Zambia. Um, they have a, a, a strong network of a lot of basket weavers um, in southern province that they've, that they've historically had a relationship with and historically kind of engaged on a number of occasions and sold their products through the, through the actual museum in Choma. Um, so one of the things that we did with them was bring in some international design experts and kind of craft experts who were familiar with international demand for these types of products. And so we put together a, a training program over a couple of weeks where this, this expert went into Choma Museum and partnered with them to bring many of the ladies from the villages in who, who are actually the producers of the products, um, do some kind of upskilling, some more design awareness, uh, some, some tweaking of the traditional skills and methods. And basically what's, what's come out now is a whole range of new baskets 
that are a bit more in line with international uh, taste, international trends, um, colors and design, these types of things. And so what that did was basically create an, a, a, a better supply base for Choma to be able to make orders uh, through, through the ladies in the villages and then either sell them retail within the shop or where the growth has really happened is, is export those into primarily the American market uh, and the European markets. So that's, that's the, kind of this, the scale and the scope of the intervention that we uh, developed with Choma Museum and how, and how Prospero was involved. For some that have challenges in obtaining the raw materials, we actually supply the raw materials ourselves to the clubs. And then at the end of each year, we sit down with the clubs and try to agree on the mix, on the prices for the following year. We need to get a price that is suitable for us, that we could be able to sell the product. And then also mindful that the people that make these handcrafts are also beautiful for a living. They also need to get something out of it, the business that they are getting. Locally, we've seen growth in our clientele base. Of course, that's Osaka, Livingston, Copper Belt, even Northwestern Province. And then internationally, we've seen a huge growth in demand for the Tonga crafts uh, in the southern region of Africa, and also exported to parts of Europe. This has prompted us to increase production and also increase efficiency. Because at the end of the day, uh, Prospero can give us that platform to meet these buyers, but we need to sustain those relationships. We've seen pretty significant increases in Chama Museum's annual revenue growth. I think, I think this intervention was two or three years ago, and um, now their, re their annual revenue from kind of this work has increased by, I believe, about 450 or 500 percent. Um, which is quite a significant growth for, a, for what's essentially a small business over the course of that time period. Um, you know, and in, in, in discussions with the museum, there's still a lot of demand that they're not currently able to meet, um, you know, for a variety of reasons. And so that, that's what we're looking at, how we could, you know, continue to scale up or continue to bring on other partners or continue to, you know, find small scale investors, etc. To, to help continue that growth in that, in that trajectory. Obviously, the development impact is clearly obviously quite significant as well because um, you know, if you're looking at that, le that amount of revenue growth at Chomo Museum, um, a lot of that gets then passed down the chain to the actual suppliers as well. So you know, they're making way more baskets than they used to make and selling more, way more baskets than they used to make, obviously. And the, product that they're, you know, the products that they're doing are more in demand as well. So you know, as, that, as that skill has improved within that within the producer base um, others are now coming to to them you know and wanting to buy baskets from them and wanting to engage with them um, in kind of a commercial relationship so yeah we're uh, you know there's a lot of room for growth in this in this wider artisanal industry in Zambia um, you know we've so Toma is just one of the kind of the organizations that we've supported one of the companies that we've engaged with and so we're, we're really looking for scaled impact, right? It's, it's great to have one or two businesses grow at a, at a high trajectory, but in terms of the development impact that we're looking for, you know, we're, we're looking at how we can connect them, how we can integrate them, how we can really support more partners within that wider value chain to, to get more Zambian produced products into the export markets, which is where your, you know, the scaled impact will come. So, you know, there's, there needs to be a bit more of a focus on um, production at scale, and, and that's going to require more focused development of skill sets. That's going to mean that you know many of the women in the villages are going to have to collaborate more, expand their own networks to get more you know more people producing this type of product. Uh, so that's where we see a lot of potential growth opportunities uh, in the future.